Creating professional motion graphics shouldn't be complicated, and sometimes when you're working on a project, a small change can make a big difference. Today, we'll be showing you five sleek animation techniques that'll have a big impact on your future projects. What's up, everyone? This is Jordan Bertone with Sonduck Film, and let's get started with our first technique. First, we're going to make a simple but effective opening transition to start off the composition. Start by going to Layer, New, Solid. Make sure the color is black and click OK. Press S for scale on the solid, uncheck constrain proportions, set a keyframe for scale at the start of the timeline, and set the Y value of the scale to 0%. Move forward a bit on the timeline, set the scale back to 100%, highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, then open up the graph editor tool and pull both sides of the curve to the middle to smooth out the animation. Lastly, just change the mode of the solid to stencil alpha so that it wipes away instead of appearing from the scale animation. And now we have this nice opening transition for our composition. Next, we'll color our background and add a few accents to the composition. We'll start by coloring the background, so highlight the background layer, then go up to Effect, Generate, Four Color Gradient. We want the gradient to be very subtle, so we'll set the first color to a slight off-white color, the next to an extremely light blue, we'll set the third to just be plain white, and the fourth to an extremely light purple. Now you can see our background has this very subtle coloring to it that makes it much more interesting than just a plain white background. Next we'll animate this accent text at the bottom of the screen, so open it up, select Animate, Opacity, set the opacity to 0%, open the range selector, go to around 1 second on the timeline, and set a keyframe for Start, move forward a bit on the timeline, and then set Start to 100%. Smooth out the keyframes with the graph editor like we did previously, now we have this nice accent text animating at the bottom of the screen. Lastly, we'll add a three-line accent to the top right of the composition, so select the rectangle tool, set fill to solid color, the color to black, set stroke to none, then click and drag to create a very small rectangle like this. Select the pan behind tool, move the anchor point to the right side of the rectangle like this, press S for scale on the rectangle, Uncheck Constrained Proportions, set a keyframe around 1 second on the timeline, set the X value of Scale to 0%, move forward a bit, and set the scale back to 100%. Smooth out the keyframes in the graph editor again, then we'll duplicate this rectangle, move the duplicate underneath of the original, duplicate it again, do the same, then stagger them on the timeline so that they animate in one by one. Now we have a more colorful background and some accent graphics that add a lot to our composition. Next, we're going to add an animated line accent and have it match colors with part of our title. Start by selecting the pen tool, set fill to none, stroke to solid color, stroke width to 30, then click to create a line that goes from one end of the composition to the other like this. Feel free to make it in whatever shape that you want. Now open the line layer, select add, trim paths, at the start of the timeline set a keyframe for end, set end to 0%, move forward to around 2 seconds on the timeline, set end to 100%, and then smooth out the keyframes with the graph editor tool. Move the line layer underneath of the text layers, then go to Effect, Stylize, Glow, and Effect, Generate, Gradient Ramp. Set the glow radius to 20, intensity to 3. For the gradient, set the start to be on the left of the composition, end to be on the right, then we'll set the start color to a bright pink, and the end color to a nice aqua. We want to match up the colors of this line to one of our titles, so copy the gradient ramp effect, paste it onto the bottom text layer, set the end of ramp to be on the left side of the text, and the start of ramp to be on the right so that the colors are the reverse of the line. Lastly, go to the character panel and click the swap fill and stroke button so that this text is an outline. And now we have a nice accent that matches with part of our title layers. Before we continue, we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Sunduck Film where we create professional motion graphic templates. If you're tired of spending endless hours crafting designs from scratch, we have a solution for you. Our Motion Deck extension can save you valuable time on every project. With access to thousands of templates, you can easily preview and apply designs similar to what we're creating in this tutorial. Simply customize the text and colors to match your brand, and you're good to go. Be sure to check out our Motion Duck Templates Pack and download our free pack of 100 templates for After Effects and Premiere Pro. The links are in the description below. And if you decide to make a purchase, you'll be supporting our YouTube channel, and we appreciate your support. Next, we're going to create these textured circles to fill out our composition. Start by selecting the Ellipse tool, set Fill to Solid Color, the color to a dark blue, Stroke to None, 
Hold Shift, then click and drag to create a small circle in the center of the composition. Hold Control, then double click the pan behind tool to center the anchor point of the circle, and use the Align tab to center the circle in the middle of the composition. Right click the circle, select Precompose, we'll name it Texture 1, click OK, open that precomp, go to Composition, Composition Settings, and we'll make this composition 1080 by 1080, and click OK. Duplicate the circle, select the bottom circle, scale it up to be around double the size of the original, then we'll set this one's color to be a lighter blue. Duplicate that circle, set its fill to none, stroke to solid color, set the color to an even lighter blue, and then set the stroke width to 15. Deselect the circle, then change the fill back to solid color, set the color to be the same as the stroke, set stroke back to none, and create a new circle right on top of the light blue stroke like this. Duplicate that circle, rotate it along the outline a bit, duplicate it again, rotate it more along the outline, and set the color of this third circle to be white. Alt-click the stopwatch for rotation, type in wiggle, parentheses 0.1, comma 100. Do the same for the second circle on the outline, but put in wiggle, 0.2, comma 60. Then do the same for the first, but put in wiggle, 0.2, comma 80. This might change the original positions of the circles on the outline, so just rotate them back to where they originally were. Next, go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, then go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur, set the blurriness to 150, and uncheck Repeat Edge Pixels. Back out to the main composition, select the Ellipse tool, create a circle that's roughly the same size as our pre-comp shape, then center it in the middle of the composition, Hide the layer, and we'll name it to Matte. Highlight Texture 1, go to Effect, Channel, Set Matte, and Effect, Perspective, Drop Shadow. For the Set Matte, have it Take Matte from the Matte Circle we just made, uncheck Stretch Matte to Fit, and Composite Matte. For the Drop Shadow, set the Opacity to 25%, Distance to 25, and Softness to 50. Now go to Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Shadow, Layer, Layer Styles, Inner Glow, Open Inner Shadow, set Blend Mode to Screen, the Color to White, Opacity to 100%, Distance to 30, and Size to 80. Open Inner Glow, set the Blend Mode to Overlay, set the Color to be the same light blue in the circle, and set the Size to 120. Now you have these amazing textured circles that you can animate in around your composition. To finish off our composition, we'll add a nice reveal animation for our title layers. Start by selecting the Rectangle tool, make a big rectangle that covers exactly half of the composition like this, put it above the bottom title layer, set the title to Alpha Matte the Rectangle, then duplicate the rectangle, put it above the top title, and set it to Alpha Inverted Matte that rectangle. Now, all you need to do is add a position animation on the top title layer, where it starts down inside of the rectangle, then comes up out of it to reveal, and add a position animation to the bottom title layer, where it starts outside of the rectangle, and animates into it, like this. Lastly, highlight all the keyframes, make them easy ease, and smooth them out in the graph editor. Now you know some sleek animation techniques that will have a big impact on all of your future projects. Make sure to subscribe to Sonduck Film for more post-production tutorials every week, and remember, always be creating.